Really? You like when I do that? I want to give you the meaning in the blood. Yeah, don't worry. Just live in the dream, buddy. Order the Monday, April 9th meeting of the Tiverton Town Council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Mello. Council Present. Mary. Present. Council Shabbat. Present. Council Ryan. Present. Council Hilton. Present. Council Demandiris. Present. Council Edwards. Present. Council LeBeau. Here. All present. Consent agenda. Approval of council workshop meeting minutes February 28, 2018. Approval of executive session meeting minutes of March 12, 2018. Councilor Hilton abstains absent. Approval of special council meeting minutes February 27, 2018. Approval of Special Counsel meeting minutes February 10th, 2018. Approval of Special Counsel meeting February 6, 2018. Council Ryan abstains absent. Approval of Special Counsel meeting January 27, 2018. Council Bow abstains absent. Approval of Special Counsel meeting January 10th, 2018. We see the minutes from the following boards and commissions. The Charter Review Commission, four. Zoning Board of Review, Budget Committee, two. Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Harbor and Coastal Water Management Commission, and Senior Center, April Newsletter. Correspondence received and filed. Jamestown Town Council Resolution in support of the removal of the sunset provision regarding the Residential Mortgage Foreclosure Mediation Act H7385 and S2270. Exeter West Greenwich Regional School District Resolution Supporting School Construction General Obligation Referendum. William Gerlich, Co Facilitator Sustainable Seconded Invitation to Attend Viewing of Award Winning Document. Terry, um, a Plastic Ocean on Saturday, April 28th at 1 p.m. at the Tiverton Library Community Room. Barrington Resolution in opposition to Governor's FY 2019 budget request for quasi-public reserve transfers. Foster Resolution in opposition to proposed inclusion of North Atlantic Regional National Outer Continental Shelf Oil and Gas Leasing Program. North Smithfield School Committee Resolutions opposition to legislation mandating expired teachers' contracts continue at existing terms. Oppos opposition to all binding arbitration legislation, support of school construction general obligation referendum, support of H7696 and S2181 amending article of seven of the Rhode Island Constitution. Twelve. Twelve, I'm sorry. Twelve. Approval of task assessor abatements, town administrative police, fire and DPW overtime reports, Susan Gill, Administrator Officer for Planning Board, March Monthly Report, Town Administrator Monthly Department Reports, Scheduling a Public Hearing for Chapter 6, Alcoholic Beverages, Article 6, Outdoor Seating on May 21st, 2018. Um, I'd like to pull 1A, Approval of Council Workshop, Meeting Minutes, February 28th, off the agenda. Any other council would like to pull anything up? Madam President. Uh, Councilor Evans. Uh, CA two A and CA eight. Madam President. CA two A and CA what? Eight, the last one. Councilor Hilton. Uh, I also have CA eight. Okay. Anyone else? I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the rest of the consent agenda, excluding CA one A, CA two A. And CA8. So moved. Second. Motions remain in second. All those in favor? Unanimous. CA1. CA1A. Um, the only thing that's missing are the minutes. If you read the front of it, it says Wednesday, but no month. So I'd like an amendment for that to be Madam Wednesday, President? February. Yes. Uh, there's also an another inconsistency. Um, I was not present at that meeting. And I'm marked down as 
uh, present. I was absent. Thank you. So I'd like to entertain a motion with the amendments to approve A1A. But Madam President, I have a question here. If you were absent. No, I was there. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. But it okay. says it says we're absent. Oh, maybe I wasn't there. Basically, it's saying that everybody. Everybody it's was it, absent. If, so if, if Councilor Shabbat, there, there was no quorum, quorum, there was no meeting. The workshop. This is the one with yeah, uh, Lorraine Joe so, from URI. So there wasn't a quorum. There was no quorum. Okay. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yes. So uh, essentially, you're not required to re file minutes then, but if you wanted to file the mi minutes of just showing there was not a quorum, you could do that um, since they've been drafted. Um, well, Council Shabbat here. No? Okay, I'm sorry. I had her here and I'm. Uh, in a minute. So it's it was just a presentation. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna amend that Councilor Shabbat was out. Councilor Shabbat was okay. out and we're putting February on there. So I'll, right. I'll make that motion then. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to be in second. All those in favor? Unanimous. We've seen the minutes from the following board the commission, Charter Review Commission, uh, with Thank you. Um, I know I brought this up at the last meeting uh, regarding the Charter Review Commission and some of the stuff that's going on, and that's not knowing quite what's happening. But uh, again, I read through the minutes that they put forward, and I've got a lot of concerns with some of the items that they put in there. Um, I'm happy to run down some of those very quickly. First off, uh, there are numerous grammatical and spelling errors throughout the documents, so I'm not sure if we want to accept those and put those into the record just based off of that. Uh, secondly, throughout the documents, they refer to themselves as quote unquote commissioners, and I was unaware that this is a title that was bestowed upon members of that committee. Um, within the charter, there is no specific uh, delegation of titles, and uh, I take a you know I, I I take offense to the fact that they're arbitrarily giving themselves titles, uh, which they they don't they don't have and are not granted anywhere in either state law, uh, or through our existing charter. Um, secondarily to that, in one of the meeting minutes, they refer to going into closed executive session. There is no documentation as to what they talked about, and when it comes to executive session, uh, I'll direct my comments to the solicitor and ask him. Um, I was under the impression that there were specific reasons why a board would go into executive session, which included potential litigation and uh, you know discussing personnel matters, uh, disposition of property, various items which, to my knowledge, are not powers that are granted to the Charter Review Commission under the existing charter, nor in state law. And so I'm concerned because it, it seems to me that they're doing something they do not have the power to do. Uh, so, uh, first, you're correct that uh, executive session is uh, a limited number of uh, enumerated reasons why you can go into March executive first. session, uh, and that's in um, uh, Title 42, uh, Chapter 46, Section 5 of the Open Meetings Act. Um, and the Charter Review Commission is um, its duties under the Charter is to recommend uh, uh, um, uh, amendments to the Charter, uh, which go to the Town Council and then sent to the voters. Um, so, I, I don't know um, what they were talking about in that session, um, since I wasn't privy to it. But you know, that, that could be a legitimate, legitimate concern, based on what they were discussing. And I I also I also want to add too that I noticed nowhere in the minutes did they refer to sealing minutes or anything along those lines. And so, if that vote was not taken and there was no proof, then technically those minutes are open, right? Right. Unless you vote to seal the minutes, the minutes are uh, a public document like any other minutes. Okay. And then uh, finally, there is reference to a quote-unquote executive board that the Charter Commission alleges they have. And again, I was unaware that there was an executive board inside of the Charter Review Commission. I thought they were just the Charter Review Commission. It's not set out in Charter, and I'm not aware of that committee either. So, so, so if I'm hearing things correctly, it sounds to me that this is something we might want to look into because they may, in fact, be in violation of the charter, the charter that they are supposed to go out and review. Uh, it's possible. It's 
it's possible. So if it, it might be something you want to look into. Okay. And so one more question for you, uh, Mr. Solicitor. What can we as a council do to find out these answers? Uh, well, uh, you know, you could ask um, uh, for uh, uh, a member of uh, the Charter Commission to come to a meeting, put it as an agenda item, and uh, ask some questions about, about uh, you know, what's been going on. Um, of course, you could always, um, uh, town administration can always discuss with the uh, Charter Commission. I'd be happy to do a presentation for them about the Open Meetings Act or anything along those lines if, uh, if uh, it was the pleasure of the council to have us do that. Okay. Um, I, I know we can't take votes on anything, but I would just like to ask, uh, I guess, the, the clerk and the president if uh, for the next agenda item we could make this, or the next agenda we have, we could make this an item and ask uh, the chair to uh, appear before the council and explain what is going on with the Charter Review Commission. Okay. And uh, I'll get in touch with Rob. And, and given some of the issues that I've raised, Mr. Solicitor, would it be acceptable for me to vote not to accept these? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'll make a motion to, uh, to not accept uh, CA2A and ask them to make revisions. I'll second that. Motions been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five. Against? Two. CA8. Um, this was Councilor Hilton and Councilor Edwards. Whoever wants to go first. Sure. About <laughs> ladies before gentlemen tonight. Okay. Councilor Hilton, if you would like to speak, I'd be happy to, to hear your thoughts. I have a feeling that they're going to be similar to mine. Okay. Um, so the only point I wanted to make on this is uh, the document that was presented back to us does not seem to reflect any of the initial discussion that the council had regarding this amendment. And uh, it looks as though it's exactly the, the same thing that we uh, asked for revisions on. Um, and so I'm concerned that, you know, we're going to go back to another public hearing to discuss something we've already discussed ad nauseum without revisions that we asked for. Actually, Councillor Edwards, I'm going to disagree with you on that. I was actually pretty pleased because I, I thought this really did address or at least the concerns that I had. Um, the reason that I put it on was simply, and I'm sure Nancy has this, but the way it was written, it was the agenda item is to advertise uh, alcoholic beverages, outdoor seating, but it's also the Vic Schilling licenses as well. And I just, it, it's. Is it all under that chapter? Actually, you need to create a new chapter for Vic Schilling licenses because it's set out in the general laws, but you never had an ordinance to, to go along with that. So, should that be what? advertised as such? It hasn't been advertised. It's a request. Yeah. So, should we put it? Yeah, I think adding virtual and liquor license should be best to be decided. To advertise. So, my concern was really just a logistic thing, but I, I actually was, when I read through it in detail, I was pretty happy that I thought um, the solicitor did, or did a good job of addressing our concerns. So, Council, go ahead. Yeah, is it just the, is it just that we're going to set a date we for the hearing? We're not going to. We don't have to take a vote at the hearing. We can continue it if we don't like what we see. Correct. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Like we do at other hearings. But so I, mean, I, I just, I'm just concerned because of the time limit. You know, they're going to start. A lot of these businesses want to start doing open seating outdoor, and if we keep prolonging it, it'll be September and. The season will be gone for them. So that was one of the concerns. John, is there something in particular? Yeah, uh, the uh, discussion regarding victualing licenses and then the requirements placed around the outdoor seating. To my recollection, we asked the solicitor to address specifically what the state law was requiring us to address. And this seems to go far beyond that scope. Madam President. Yes. Do do we know, uh, or John, maybe you do? Do you know what, what that uh, when that was? It, just to save me from looking through all the. I, I don't uh, remember exact dates. Okay. But I know it came up. Uh, <laughs> uh, we had another administrator at the time. One of the twenty-seven <laughs> meetings we had in January. It was, it was in January. Well, that's good. No, because I actually thought it was good. So you, you took me by surprise when you said that it was very different from what we had discussed. Because I thought that I thought, oh, this looks good. 
So I would like to, I just wanted to. I mean, we're we're going to have a, a hearing to talk about it anyways. I just wanted to. No, I know, I, but statement. I wanted to compare. Would you yeah. like to address the concerns uh, about state law? So I think, um, you know, I think if, if there's, um, if there's, if it's going to need to come down to a vote of the council of what they'd like to see in it, it'd probably be better to put it to the hearing and that way you can vote and say, take this out, put this in. We'll go back, redraft it, give it a second reading, and you can you can say think of what you like there. Okay. Um, if it, but if so, if, if it's uh, if it's something that needs to come to a vote, that might be the best process um, to go through. But yeah. it was in January, you think? I no. no I, thought know, was, like that, I thought it was. I thought it was all the way back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a while back. You you were not interim at. Yes, you're right. It was, it was so in September. It was September? September? I think it was September. Wow. Yeah. We're, we're overdue to get this. Yes, because they were trying to get the, yes, trying to get the late license right. for and, this, and, and for this Paul round. And Paul McGrady was our solicitor. Yeah. Right. And they had some meetings was our administrator. with the establishments. Right, and we, they wanted to get that license yeah. by November. When Okay, so that, that we get, we got that back to September. Let's, yeah. let's go. I think it's all the way back then. Yeah. I think they were trying to do it for Labor Day, if I'm not. Okay. Mistaken. Okay. They were trying to do something for labor. All right. So we'll approve the hearing. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion. I'll, motion. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept CA8. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Motion to remain second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Open public forum announcements, comments, and questions. Um, Peter, for the open forum, I have two requests to talk about the ordinance amendment regarding um, that's on the agenda. Now, I close that public hearing, mm -hmm. and we're just hopefully going to make a decision this evening. Do I have to? Right. So usually, am I required to have some, more people speak? Usually, when someone signs up for a public comment on something that's posted on the agenda, you refer them to that item on the agenda where they could speak on it. Uh, since for this has already been the public hearing, uh, both sides or interested parties have had a chance to speak on it. It would be appropriate to go and, and uh, have the uh, council deliberate at that point, especially because you've already closed the public hearing at the last meeting. And you don't you don't want to get into a situation where. Well, you're my there. concern is if I let one side speak, then now I'm opening a can of worms where, where the other side. Yeah. I, I should yeah. have speaks. So. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's uh, exactly an uh, appropriate concern. We had an hour and a half open um, public meeting where everyone was allowed to speak as much as they wanted to. Um, so I think I'll go along with the solicitor's opinion and um, recognize that it was a closed, it was a closed public hearing, and it's later on in the agenda. The next item is Leroy E. Kendricks, Chair Water Wastewater District Project Update. Welcome. Uh, good evening. I uh, <coughs> know that you have a packed agenda tonight, and so I just had. Lucky four. you going first. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. This was a plan to this, tonight. This was great. Thank you. Uh, so I have just four short items that I would like to go over uh, in the interest of keeping the the counselors and the public uh, kind of up to date as to what's going on with us. Uh, the first item I would, would like to talk about is the, is the project uh, that has to do with Riverside Drive and Robert Gray area. Um, we, as you heard, we went out to bid. The bids came in high. Uh, we went back to our engineer to uh, uh, rescope the project. The engineering has been done. Uh, we have uh, solicit uh, have we submitted our drawings to USDA for their approval, and that's where we are. It kind of takes a while for them to do their thing. I did talk the to the program director on Friday, and she said at least uh, three to four weeks. So, uh, in the meantime, we're we're on hold with the project until we uh, till their engineer reviews it. Uh, she's a new director, and she's uh, their engineer is swamped, and so. We just wait. Um, one thing I did want to, to uh, emphasize, though, that when we had our public hearings on these projects, we made the commitment that the assessment was going to be not to exceed eighteen thousand dollars, and that is guaranteed. So uh, there's no concern on our part that it's going to exceed what we said because we said that uh, that question did come up in the public hearing. What if it goes over? And I said, well, we're, we're, it can't go over because that's what we committed to. 
So I just want to reassure the counselors and the public that that's what we're committed to. Um, as part of uh, lessening the cost of the project, uh, we, we had to separate out the abutters. These uh, abutters are people that currently uh, abut the sewer or are for the sewer. And we have another program for them. Um, it's this, uh, instead of them being part of the project, we're using sewer or we're encouraging them to use the sewer uh, tie-in loan fund called the Stealth Fund. It's a low, low interest uh, fund by Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank, and the, uh, the terms are, are favorable. Uh, all of this is on our website, uh, but the terms, there's a, a $300 uh, loan origination fee and a 1% uh, annual servicing fee, which is a, equivalent to a 1% interest, I guess, mm -hmm. on the outstanding balance. Uh, residents can borrow up to ten thousand dollars for a term of up to five years, and I did want to to also say there's additional funding source from the uh, uh, church community housing. They have two loan programs. One is a three percent interest loan up to thirty thousand uh, dollars for up to fifteen years. So if someone needed to to really stretch it out, uh, that's available. And then there also is a zero interest. Uh, loan that church community housing has that uh, they can borrow up to five thousand dollars this is for seniors that are 60 years or older up and persons with disabilities and that loan does not have to be paid back until the house is sold or the title is transferred so uh, there are a variety of ways that uh, the sewer uh, can be tied in so but we have uh, have this up on our website, uh, twwd.org. And uh, so, uh, any any questions? Please, uh, we're trying to put everything up we can on the website. So I, I encourage people to go there. If <clears throat> if you don't find what you need there, uh, then call the office. Uh, my third item is just a, a kind of a housekeeping thing. Uh, we are currently advertising for a general manager. And we also have a board vacancy, and so uh, anyone interested in those positions, uh, there's a position description on the website. And as far as a board member is concerned, uh, the board member that uh, uh, resigned uh, was a financial person. So if you particularly have an interest in financial financials, uh, we'd love to to talk to you. Uh, the last thing I'd like to address is the 2020 deadline. I think there was some con concern about that. Uh, Rightum is very uh, supportive of this project, and they have assured us that as long as we're making progress toward construction, that uh, they'll allow some flexibility uh, to the residents and to the district on the 2020 deadline. I mean, their interest is to get people hooked up on sewer, not to, uh, to be an obstructionist in that. So. Um, that's the the four items that I, that I that I had. So, thank you. Any questions from the council? Council the position on the board is that a volunteer position? It is. Okay. We get exactly zero per year. But it's very. <laughs> but it's because really, of the money. <laughs> but it's very rewarding. I've been uh, with the sure commission is. and the district for probably close to ten years yeah. now. So. Councilor Edwards. Uh, thank you. Um, Leroy, just two questions for you. Uh, for the RITEM, uh, did they send you guys anything in writing? Can we ask them to send you something in writing? Because generally I don't trust Rhode Island DEM or really any state agency when they say something off the cuff because they're, they're inclined to come back and say something different depending on who you talk to. Uh, I, I would be happy to uh, solicit something in writing or okay. something. Because that, that was in the enabling of legislation, which that's what concerns me. Sure. Um, okay. And if and if we have to, you know, assist you guys in going back to amend the enabling legislation to reflect a date change, I, I think that's something we should do, yeah. uh, because of the the delays in the program. Um, and then the other question on the on the on the enabling legislation for the board, I noticed you guys have I think it's five members. Yes. Um, I know that those terms were set out in the initial phase, but um, at some point you guys are going to have to actually. Uh, I think expand the board to seven. Uh, no, we have the flexibility to ex expand to, to seven. Okay. You know, five is the minimum and seven is the maximum. 
Gotcha. Because I just want to make sure that you know that there aren't going to be any issues, you know, with that, and you know, making sure that you're bringing in new board members and all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions from the council? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. you too. <laughs> public hearings, advertised public hearings, public hearing, comprehensive community plan updates, proposed 2017 comprehensive community plan updates, and possible vote. Um, I am going to call for a vote to continue to April 30th. After thinking about this and putting it on a regularly scheduled meeting, this is another um, topic that would be long and take a few hours, I believe, and, and it deserves our time and um, our attention. So Madam um, at this point, I'd like to call for a vote. Um, I, I think I have to make a motion to, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll make a motion to continue uh, the uh, item B1 to April 30th. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And it'll be April 30th at 7 o'clock here at Town Hall. Right? Nancy? Yes. Okay. You booked the room? <laughs> well, that's what I'm worried about. Andrew Snyder, 605 Neck Road, request approval of sound variance on September 8, 2018, from 5 to 11 for outdoor wedding and reception in the tent, a non advertised special event permit, and F, full liquor license. Mr. Snyder, I know you're here. Could you, could you come up for a moment? Hi. So we have um, in our packet a description of the event. Is there any questions from the council? I have just one question, um, only because I don't know. If you're... Do you need anything special to have fireworks on your property? Because this does say it includes fireworks, yes? So there is a, that's just part of the, um, other than, you know, speaking with the town fire department. Uh, okay. But making, uh, that's just part of the uh, noise variance request. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. That was my question. Would this require the fire department to approve this? Or at least the uh, fire marshal to? If I could add, Ocean State Pyrotechnics, who is the one who are doing it. And okay. it's only a two-minute show. And they <laughs> take care of the permits. <laughs> Okay. I was thinking like this big so, but no, that's okay. <laughs> um, any other questions? Madam President. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to approve the sound variance on September 8th, 2018 from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. at 605 Neck Road for Andrew Snyder uh, for the outdoor wedding and reception in a tent. Um, can I combine the liquor license? So no. You have to do that separately. separately. Okay, so I'll make that motion for the uh, the sound variance now. Second. Motion has been made and second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. And Madam President, uh, if I may, I'd like to also make a motion to um, approve the non-advertised special event permit and Class F full liquor license uh, for Andrew Snyder, uh, 605 Neck Road, from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. on September 8th, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Oh, I do, Madam Chair. Uh, I just noticed on one of these, expected number of attendees is 200, and another one is 150. Um, is that? That's because we don't know, but it will not exceed 200. Okay. Okay, that was all. Any other questions? Nancy, do you have? Nancy, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just you. have, um, well, actually I had two questions. On this liquor, will you be selling liquor? No. At this, no, there's absolutely. no selling of liquor, so it's okay? Yeah, so uh, technically, um, under state law, if you're selling, you need a license. You can either get a Class F license, which allows individuals to do it one day, or you have a Class P license, which your caterer gets ahead of time, and they can send it to place to place we went back and forth on this and they seemed to feel that this was the better way to do it okay and, and you and you can grant the license still just to give a belt and suspenders approach but if you're not selling alcohol and it's on your own private property technically you don't need a license so would you like us to still go through with this just to uh, that's really up to the clerk's office Nancy? they have requested this um, well, I guess I don't need it if you
you're saying you don't need it. If, if you're not going to sell, then you're not going to sell. Not going to sell anything. So the sell variance would be I'm just going to point out that this is this is a thirty-five dollar revenue hit that you're going <laughs> 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 to. Because I'm so early in the agenda, I'm willing to contribute the thirty-five dollars. <laughs> So we don't need a motion to the liquor license. No, not if he's if, if he's not going to sell. He doesn't need a license. Madam President, I'll withdraw my motion. Andrew, you're all done. Thank um, you very much. Tell the bride and groom good luck, and I Thank hope it goes well. Much. Congratulations. Thank you. Public hearing advertised. Um, I'm sorry, Town Council City is about a licensing. Band of fireworks, 525 Main Road. Request fireworks license and holiday license subject to meeting all legal requirements. Anyone here from Phantom? I believe you had this license last a couple of years. Uh, we, yes, we did not have it last year. We had it the prior year and at least the prior year to that. That's correct. Um, any concerns with the fire department? No. Any questions from the council? Madam President. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the fireworks license and holiday license for Phantom Fireworks at 525 Main Road, subject to meeting all legal requirements. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam President? Yes. Uh, don't we still have to approve this special event? Oh, yeah. See, I, yes. For uh, Mr. Snyder? Well, no. Actually, I will approve them. We don't have to do that, right? No. no. The clerk can approve them. Usually, if that's okay. 100 or other reasons. Okay. Jamie L. Arthur Matisse. Would you like me to approach you? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> well, I just butchered your name, so yes. <laughs> It looks One, like a PI. 153 <laughs> Woman Avenue requests private investigative license subject to meeting all legal requirements. Have you had this license in the past? Yes, ma'am. Any questions from the council? Madam President, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the private investigative license for Jamie L. Arthur uh, Martz. Martins. Martins. Yes, sir. Martins. Uh, easy one. <laughs> 153 Born Ave, subject to meeting all legal requirements. Second. I have a motion to second. Any Discussion? All those in favor? Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Good to see you, Joe. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I really like it. No one's <laughs> investigating you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and Susan Boulay, Riverside Marina, LLC. 211 Riverside, request for holiday license, subject to meeting all legal requirements. Is anyone here from Riverside of Marina? Any comments from the clerk? No, no this is a renewal. Okay. Madam President. It's only a holiday license. Yes. We don't even get a fee. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the holiday license for Kevin and uh, Susan Boulay, uh, Riverside Marina, subject to meeting all legal requirements. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments and resignations. Resignation, Peter Mello, first alternate zoning board. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept his, Peter's resignation with our appreciation for all, all his service to Tiverton. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. You go to rest? No. Okay. Did, did you yeah. go? I'm sorry, I thought so. Appointment of Jennifer Hilton, 128 Church Pond Drive to first alternate zoning board, currently holds second. Is Jennifer here? I don't think I see her. Um, any discussion from the council? Madam President, I have uh, one question. Because um, I know Jennifer Hilton's on the planning board too, right? No? No. She's only on the zoning. Only on the zoning? Okay, never mind. That was the zoning we pointed for. Uh, well, in that case, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, to appoint Jennifer Hilton, 128 Church Pond Drive, uh, to the position of first alternate zoning board. Second. Motion to be made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. 
Annual appointment of Planning Board Administrator Officer Susan Gill, Planning Board recommendation. Any discussion from the council? Madam President. Uh, Councilor Edwards. Uh, I just have one point that I'd like to make. Um, when Susan graciously volunteered to take up this position, um, she did so uh, under the assumption that we were going to do something to provide her some assistance and uh, find somebody, um, you know, to do this full time. And I'm a little uh, disturbed because I thought by now, um, you know, we would have somebody to fill that role. And I feel like we as a town and we as a council are taking advantage of Susan um, and her generous offer to step up and do all this work. Um, so I, you know, I think that we should strongly consider finding an alternative here so we stop taking advantage of this, you know, volunteer who also serves on the board. Um, well, I do know that we had one application for a planner. And we're still in the process. Correct. As the personnel board has conducted its interview, and we'll have a follow-up interview next next week. So this will help Susan eventually. I I would assume that if um, Susan's name is here, that she is willing to continue on until we find an alternative. Is that true, Susan? And the planning board did um, recommend her unanimously. I understand. Um, she's done a a fine job, an excellent job, actually. Um, she's going to have to stay on for a little while to orient whoever comes aboard to take over this position because she's gained a lot of knowledge at this point and she has a lot of projects. Um, is there any other discussion? I have one other question for uh, Stu, if possible. Um, at the, uh, uh, in the letter you sent, it says that you guys posted, uh, uh, you voted unanimously. We don't have an issue with the fact that Susan's also on the board, right, to appoint herself to this position. I just want to make sure that that's not an issue. No, no, that's not an issue. Okay. That's okay. Madam President? Mind, then. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's actually, I mean, I, I'm very grateful to Susan for doing this. I think it's imperative that she stays on. She said that she's willing to do it. She knows all the stuff. And it sounds like we might have somebody soon, so it will be really important to have a, a seamless transition and not have another person in there who doesn't know what they're doing. Or, you know, is going to have to, I, I just think it's amazing to me that if Susan is willing to do it, I, I, think, it's, I think it would be wonderful to have her. Madam President. Councilor Hilton. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, reappoint Susan Gill for one year um, or until such time as a new administrative officer is named um, to the position of administrative officer of the planning board. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion regarding this? Motion's been made and second. All those in favor? Five. Against? Two. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Unfinished business. Proposed ordinance amendment requested by Raymond Johnson Chemical Holdings, LLC, on Article um, 4, Section. 5H public utility uses, section 6J open recreation uses, and article 10, section 3, parking, storage, and use of major recreational equipment in a residential district. Continued for March 26 meeting. Public comment portion was closed. Um, so at the last meeting, we were giving copious amounts of paperwork, um, and <coughs> everyone wanted to go home and read it and make sure that they had all the facts before we made a decision. Um, at this point, I'd like council discussion. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? Madam President. Uh, council Little Bob. <coughs> the, the, the biggest concern um, that I have with this, with this ordinance um, being put in place or not being put in place by not allowing Mr. Johnson to have his business on this property and changing the ordinance to get it down to zoning. We have no control over what happens on his property. And I know the biggest issue right now is motorcycle riding around down there. Um, this ordinance, by saying no, is not going to stop motorcycles from riding there. Yes, it is. No, it's not. We can't tell Mr. Johnson that he can't drive motorcycles on his property. Well, we can we, tell him to a limit. No, no, we can't limit him. Now, let, let me finish, and then we'll let the okay. attorney do his thing. Um, he can have motorcycles ride on his property as long as he doesn't break any sound ordinances. The ordinance is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If we grant this man his license, we can control what hours are there. 
we can tell him he can run on four Sundays. We can tell him he can only run till four o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. As it is now, if we tell him no, and he wants to stop at 7 a.m. and close at 6.59 a.m. every single night, so long as he doesn't break an ordinance, we can't control that. That's like telling somebody they can't have a barbecue on their property. My opinion, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, so um, <laughs> what, the, what the ordinance was aimed to address was um, a commercial recreational use. So if you, have, if you have a commercial recreational use where you're collecting money for operating um, uh, uh, motocross, as it stands now, that would be a violation of the ordinance. There are some other restrictions, including the sound ordinance and uh, the special <laughs> event based on how many people come. Um, but if your question is whether one person driving on or one or two people driving on the property without violating the sound ordinance, without violating the special event ordinance and not doing it for a commercial, as a commercial use, uh, then you're, you're correct. That would. But we can't limit him to one or two. We can limit him not to make noise, not to violate our noise ordinance. Peter, is, the, is that true? Because I thought that he couldn't have a certain amount of people. That there's, the, um, there's a couple of overlapping things. There's the um, special event provision, uh, which has a limitation on the number of people you can have for a, an outdoor uh, special event. Uh, there's the noise ordinance, which uh, prohibits the uh, certain decibel level, level when measured from the property line. And there's the um, provision of the um, zoning ordinance that prohibits uh, a commercial uh, uh, use, in this case would be a commercial recreational use in a residential zone. So those are the three um, uh, regulatory areas that uh, you know, Mr. Johnson would be concerned with. This would allow him to, uh, the proposed ordinance would allow him to conduct the commercial use in a residential zone by grant of a special use permit, which would go to the zoning board. They can review it, see whether or not it creates a nuisance, add conditions, that sort of thing. Um, but as it stands now, um, there's no, uh, there is a prohibit, there's a prohibition of having a commercial use. There's a prohibition if it reaches a certain number. There's a prohibition if it reaches a certain noise. Uh, but if, if it doesn't reach any of those limits, then it's not, there is no prohibition specifically for, for motocross. Could you tell me what the prohibition is on the number of riders he's allowed there? Because I've never seen, I went through everything and I didn't find anything that says he can't have a hundred guys so long as he doesn't break the sound ordinance. Yeah, let me, um, let me just pull up the um, special event. Um, uh, but this is now, we're talking, I'm not talking about an event, I'm not talking about a commercial business. I'm talking okay. about... Ray has a lot of friends. If he has 50 friends every Saturday and Sunday and they want to ride for 12 hours, and he doesn't break any ordinance, there's nothing that we can do about it. Okay. So I say grant the guy a license and we can control what he does. Right now, we're not going to have control. So that's my thought on what's happening. Peter, we've discussed this before with Tony, and he isn't allowed to have um, 50 people there. He's allowed to have a couple of friends there, and we've, yeah, we've discussed that before. No. But I want to see it in the I want to know what's going on so I know how to make my vote in the next five okay. minutes. Well, let me... Um, let me pull up the, uh, um, so it's um, section uh, 51, um, and it has a definition of public entertainment, and it has both non-commercial and, and commercial uh, defined there. Um, and when it talks about, um, uh, okay, uh, and talking about non-commercial entities and individuals, um, outdoor public entertainment, non-commercial entities and individuals desiring to provide outdoor public entertainment uh, must obtain a public entertainment license from the town clerk, and it has uh, certain definitions about the number of persons that can uh, attend that. And Could you tell me what that number is? to speak up. Okay, I apologize. But... Um, and in, in, in any event, uh, the, the use that's allowed now, uh, any use that's incidental to a recreational use um, is allowed in a, re a residential zone. So any normal, uh, any normal um, uh, residential use, and this, um, this, act, this issue actually came up with the uh, um, Pelletier case, the Tiger Tree case, where, and finding a line between what, when you cross over from, um, 
residential to commercial uh, has often has to do with the size of your operation. So uh, the compost creation in the Pelletier case, uh, our residential zone can make compost on, a, on their property. But what the court found was because it reached a certain size and a certain uh, intensity that it, was, that it was no longer an incidental use to the, to the permitted use, it became its own principal use, which wasn't permitted. But how, how my question is, how are we going to stop a person from using his property if it's his friends coming over to ride? It's no different than having a, a, a cookout on Saturday with 30 of your friends. Where, where, I want to know where the difference is. I need a number. You're not giving me a number. So, uh, like, can he have 50 people? I think to, to use that example, and I think, you know, it goes to an issue of enforcement uh, because, you know, that's the, the line is where uh, a zoning enforcement officer and ultimately a court would decide um, when you cross over from having an incidental use to a residential use to no longer having residential use. Correct. So, so uh, people, including myself, have been riding on that property since we were little kids. And now it, I can see not giving them a business, but we can't tell people they can't go ride there. That's just not. I don't think it's constitutional in the beginning. All I want is a number. Say, yes, Ray, you can have 30 people. I need a number. If it's in there, if it's not in there, I want to know there is no number, and he can do whatever he wants on that property. So I, when I was referring to the public entertainment license before, I was thinking of a number, but that's attached to the indoor public entertainment. Okay. Uh, the outdoor public entertainment doesn't have a specific number. Okay. Um, but I think what you would look at is... Like if he broke a sound ordinance. If he's breaking the sound ordinance, then he has to stop. It would be a sound ordinance, and that would be when a residential use would become something where it's no longer a residential use. But who determines <laughs> such a use? Who would say it would that be is a zoning enforcement officer. If he disagreed with that, he could appeal it to the zoning board, and if, they, and if the zoning board made a decision that he didn't agree with, he could appeal it to a court. And the court can make a decision. And but who, why would Ray have to appeal it? Why, why wouldn't the town have to appeal it and tell him, well, you know what, Ray, you're breaking the law now. But he, you can't have friends at your house anymore. That's what, that's what this is leading to. Yeah. You know, Basically. Um, I, mean, I mean, you open up a giant can of worms going on here. I, I say we give the guy a license, we can control him. If we don't, we can't control what's going on. Yeah. So. I, I think, I think you, you're hitting on a couple of things. Is one, there are a number of different enforcement mechanisms. Um, and two, you know, enforcing is not an easy um, no. thing because a lot of times you need to make a, a judgment call. Um, but that being said, you know, there is a line where you cross from a residential use to a non-residential use. But there's not a number line. There's not right. a number of people. There, yep. there, there is a noise ordinance. Yep. So we don't want the cops having to use our resources. But people call, oh, he's riding again. Well, he's not breaking the law. So there's nothing we can do. He's not breaking the law. So we don't need the cops there every 10 minutes a day, every Saturday and Sunday. So I'm just saying that the best way, my opinion, to avoid this thing is to be able to control that man's operation. Other than that, we're not going to be able to. I'm done. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I mean, I think it's important to remember that this isn't just raised property we're talking about. We're talking about every residential area and changing it, and it's not just that property. So we're talking about throughout town. This is not just, uh, just picking that property and saying, that they can do the specific there. It's talking in every residential area in town. And I think that's what the important thing is. That's what this is. John, did you want to say something? I mean, I, I will at some point, but if somebody else has Anyone comments, else? by all means. Um, Madam President, I, I guess, um, well, I, I thought the, the crux of it was more is, is changing the zoning and changing the zoning into 100 acres. And when someone said that this was like, oh, there's only a couple of properties like this in Tiverton, that's not true. You can easily buy two pieces of adjacent land, and all of a sudden, you've got more than 100 properties. So it's not just about his uh, property. But I guess the other thing, there's like a, a number of things that um, this, the planning board unanimously uh, voted to not allow this. The Open Space Committee unanimously voted not to allow this. We've gotten many emails and calls about not having this happen. So the amount of damage this can do to the rest of the town. And uh, this town, we have been consistent in the comp plan, in what people have been saying. We want a small uh, town atmosphere. And if you look at the plans for this, and it's just like the amphitheaters, the noise, the, re the, the shops, all of that, none of that looks like a small town atmosphere. 
So um, I just don't see how you can, you can, I just don't see how you can approve this. I just, I, there's so many things that are wrong with it. And to say that it's all one man's property and that's all it's about, it's not. It's about the town. Um, any other counselors besides Mandy and Chris? Councilor Hilton? Yeah. Um, it, it, again, I think it's impor important to, you know, reiterate the original question. The, the question in front of us is not whether or not Mr. Johnson should be allowed to do this on his property or not. The question is whether or not we amend <coughs> the zoning for the entire R80 zone um, to allow motocross or go-kart tracks or similar activities on those properties. And, um, um, and, and that's, really, that's really the question. So, you know, if you separate that out from, you know, Mr. Johnson's property, you have to ask yourself whether or not um, you want to change the zoning to include this type of activity anywhere in the R80 zone. But when you think about what's happened on Mr. Johnson's property and, and the, the outcome of, you know, the, the nature of the complaints, to me it's a good example of why this isn't a good fit. I mean, the purpose of zoning and the enabling law lays out in detail um, the things that zoning can do for you, but amongst those are to provide for orderly growth um, and, you know, to protect public health and safety, as well as to control things like noise pollution and other kinds of pollution. And, you know, when you have a residential zone, it isn't to say that you can't ever have any commercial things in a residential zone, but what good zoning does is it puts things together that are compatible. In other words, things that can coexist um, next to each other and not have a negative impact on one type or, of property or, or another. And there are plenty of examples of things that we actually allow by right or special use permit in our residential zones because those things can coexist in a residential zone. As a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, um, the council passed the um, solar uh, installation ordinance, which is an example of a commercial use that can fit and work well in a residential zone without um, negatively impacting the residential property. And I do believe that early on in this process, one of the things that Mr. Johnson actually asked for was for the town to consider that. As it turns out, the planning board was just was doing just that. Um, so there's an example of, of a use that Mr. Johnson asked for, and in turn, the, the town has granted it. But um, I don't see that you know, a motocross track, and that's what Mr. Johnson is asking for, is a, the commercial use of a motocross facility is a good fit in a residential zone. And, you know, one of the things that came up in there were a lot of the experts were testifying about, you know, sort of value and what sets property value. In my corporate experience, there's really one thing that sets value in price, and that's supply and demand. And, you know, if you look at a neighborhood like rural South Tiverton in the R80 zone, most of the people who move there or are interested in buying there want to go there because they're choosing a quiet, more peaceful kind of place to live. If you have something that is um, aggressively loud or disruptive in a neighborhood like that, in a zone like that, not necessarily right away, but you know, over time, you're going to devalue the surrounding residential properties because it is a matter of supply and demand. And there simply won't be as much demand in a zone like that for a property that has noise versus other you know, quieter, more rural properties. So I don't think that this is a, a good fit. I don't think it belongs there. I also, to be honest, am not really understanding Councillor LeBeau's point because, you know, this is zoning. What you're talking about is licensing. You can't change a zone and make a change to the zoning code that comes with hours of operation or time limits or any of those kinds of things. That comes from the licensing process. So you know, I don't see 
how we would even consider changing a zone, but putting restrict our restrictions on operation. I, I don't even think you can do that within the zoning code. Anyone else? Madam President, I'll, or Councilor Shabbat, if you want to go. I, I just wanted to <clears throat> uh, follow up on, with the solicitor. So this was before those two comments. So um, if there was a um, NOV issued and there's an appeal to the zoning board and that fails as well, the next step is to um, go to the Superior Court, appeal to the Superior Court. Right. And there's actually okay. there's two different ways to enforce. Either he can take an appeal of, of the zoning board's decision to the Superior Court or the town could bring an action immediately to the Superior Court or the Municipal Court to enforce what they are um, claiming is a violation. Okay. Are we in that process now, but then we, we held off until this this process goes on, but we are at the court level right now, are we not? Right. The town filed the de uh, declaratory judgment action um, and a notice of violation issue, which also um, Mr. Johnson appealed. So there's two separate tracks in addition to this track. Okay. Councilor Shabbat, do you? And, and I, just for clarification, part of this zoning ordinance amendment does have the criteria for the special use permit that does have the hours and the and the months of operation. So I'm confused. Is this this document in front of us elite? It, based upon what Ms. Hilton said, this, we couldn't do this in an ordinance. So uh, traditionally, for a permitted use, you don't impose conditions on the use at the ordinance level. Uh, when it's a conditionally permitted use through a special use permit where they have to go to the zoning board. Uh, the zoning board can place conditions because at that point they see it as one particular application speaking about one particular property. So they can place conditions specific to a property through the special use permit process. Okay. So this section three is is not valid? No, it is it would be valid because it's uh, if it's a special use permit use, you can place conditions on it. So that would basically be telling the zoning board when you see this use come in, no. here's a condition we want you to put on by ordinance in addition to anything else you put on. Okay. All right. I got it. I just want a clarification. On Any that point. Anything further, Joe? I'll, I'll let oh. Mr. Edwards go. Thank you. So, obviously, this is a pretty contentious topic. Um, and I've thought a lot about this uh, over the last week. But... You know, when I look at, you know, our comprehensive community plan and, and I look at, you know, the way we've handled zoning traditionally in this town, you know, one of the things that's really stuck out to me is we want to avoid situations where we're setting up zoning specifically for one piece of property. Yet in Tiverton's history, that seems to be what we've done. Um, you know, I look at the villages on Mount Hope Bay. Their comprehensive community plan language was, was written specifically for them. Uh, you know, in the last comprehensive community plan discussion we had, uh, we had somebody who owns a big piece of property come up, look for special treatment uh, for him. And just the last council meeting, you know, this council as a body, myself excluded, voted to switch open space back to R60. We've set a precedent, and that's spot zoning. And so I'm just a little, I'm a little hesitant, obviously, because I don't want to do the wrong thing here, and I don't want to get out of line from where we should be but we as a council and prior councils before us have all done the same thing and that's do special things for certain properties so i almost feel like we've gone ahead and set ourselves a precedent and during the discussion one of the things that really stood out to me as well was this uh this discussion about golf course versus driving range and i was really shocked i didn't even know that we couldn't have a driving range which typically on a golf course is something you would have to have um, and that's not allowed by right. I, I think that there's a lot of problems inside of our zoning regulation. We need to address those as a council. And picking them off one by one is probably not the way to do it. From what I understand, most of what we have hasn't even been codified yet. Um, and we haven't gotten, gotten to that point where we need to uh, uh, um, put, those, put, put some of our, uh, our zoning ordinances into place. Stuff that we have been 
you know, putting into the comprehensive community plan. And then the other thing that really stuck out to me as well um, is in the discussion, there was, uh, uh, you know, a young lady who stood up and she talked about um, being at, uh, working at the hospital and seeing kids who are injured. And I can tell you, I live in north, the north end of town. There are uh, kids who ride up and down my street on dirt bikes and ATVs. And they're all over the place. You know, and I think that we as a community need to think about how we're going to solve that issue. Now, is this the right piece of zoning amendment? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I think that we need to look longer and harder at this, specifically, you know, as it relates to taking something that would be for outdoor recreational use and how we attach other commercial entities to it. So as, as written, not a, not a huge fan of this the way it is, but I think it's a good starting point. And I think we as a, con as a council need to have that conversation. And we also need to uh, you know, think about the other uh, voters in this town who would be negatively impacted by us not doing something like this and who may be injured when they're riding illegally up and down the gas pipelines or on our streets, uh, you know, up, up, not, not just on the south end of town, but also on the north end of town. So um, you know, as it stands, I think that we need to continue the discussion on this and find a solution that's going to last for the long term because if we as a council continue to let special interests come in front of us and you know find solutions for that specific piece of property it's going to be bad long term Madam president no did you want to do it god do you want to no i was going to ask if there was any further um oh, i just want my recollection of the past discussions uh, about sp single use property, um, there was one on or two on Fish Road, <laughs> did not go over well. So it wasn't that we were trying to do a spot. As a matter of fact, people were saying, no, if you do that, you're going down the wrong pathway. That's one thing. But the other thing is, um, if you even considered changing this, again, you're talking about all of South Territon. This is not one piece of property. This is something that you got to talk about about with the town. So if you if we want to continue, if Mr. Johnson wants to continue to try and think about what use he could use, I don't have a problem with that. But but to try to the amount of destruction I can see going on in this town would be awful. And all you have to do is string two pieces of property together. And what he is suggesting that he wants to do is to change it radically. And that doesn't say that the you know we need some we need to do some work on the zoning, but not not to not to not to destroy the town to do that. Any further discussion? Because I'm going to call for a vote. I, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, a motion. I I, I would like to um, point out one other thing for the solicitor's um, consideration. In the zoning code, um, there is a definition for a noise disturb disturbance um, that while it also indicates that it may be that it exceeds the decibel level um, it, it's quite broad and talks about um, not only the decibel level but things that are disturbing or unnecessary the making creating or permitting of any noise of such character um, as to be detrimental to life, health, welfare of an individual or noise which either steadily or intermittently annoys, disturbs, injures or endangers the comfort, repose, peace and safety of any individual. And later on, if you look further down in the noise ordinance, on page, I'm sorry, I'm doing this online so I have to scroll. under section uh, pass motorized vehicles I sorry I've that. lost I this it. Chromebook over here <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> hang on a second um, under under section uh, 38143, motorized vehicles, number F, it says no person shall operate a recreational vehicle or permit the operation of one or more recreational vehicles individually or in a group or in an organized racing event on public or private property in such a manner as to create a noise disturbance across a real property boundary. So 
you know, to Councillor LeBeau's point, I'm not sure how many or what constitutes that, but our ordinances are fairly um, clear that, you know, disturbance noise, um, nuisance noise is not permitted. And I'm not sure that there's anything in there or we can say at this table how many friends that is that constitutes that um, but again I do go back to the point that what Mr. Johnson is asking for is not this is not about friends on Mr. Johnson's property this is about the commercial use of that property for um, organized and commercially um, supported motocross activity any other questions from the council? I just have a few comments. <clears throat> um, I'm just a little um, perplexed. We have been going over the comprehensive community plan. And uh, one of the uh, issues I have with it um, is the legal nonconforming use uh, property, where basically rights were taken away from uh, property owners when a broad swath of change was made to just put everything in a, in a particular zone. Um, north End went from R10 to R30 and South Tiverton went from whatever it was to R80. And historically that piece of property is a commercial property. And if you look at the zoning for general commercial, it is a special use permit for general commercial. So by just taking a, a brush and painting it across South Tiverton and saying everything is R80, that's not exactly true. There has been traditional commercial businesses there, and they lost a lot of rights when we made them R80. They can't expand, they can't change, they can't improve their business. They can't build a bigger building to build a, a, a boat. They have to stay in their own, own small building. And I mentioned sturdy boat, and that's been mentioned many times before, that they can't, they can't change. They can't change their business model. They can't in, in make improvements, make efficiencies in order to be profitable. So we have hurt businesses in town Amen. By, yeah. by changing zoning with just a broad stroke of the paintbrush mm -hmm. and that's why I say if this property looks like a commercial property to me it is a commercial property and I look at the zoning and it's their commercial property it does have it as a special use permit that's one thing and going again on the comprehensive community plan people are worried in South Tiverton about water and if this piece of property, how many pieces, how many parcels could this be developed into, theoretically, into house lots? And how much, how many wells would have to be installed? And what is the pressure on the water in South Tibetan? I've heard people say that we had a drought and people's wells were running dry. So how much pressure do you want to put in South Tibetan on all of that land being designated as housing. And that's basically what it is. You're making it all residential. Even though there's General Auto, m and Feed, there's commercial businesses all over South Dividend. So I have to, I'm, I'm perplexed as to how we, how we balance that and say to a person, yeah, you have a piece of property and you can develop it. Um, then, so that's, that's um, looking at the comprehensive community plan. Then, when it comes to um, what we've done to Mr. Johnson, last year he came in for a special event permit and basically we told him no that he had to go and go to the zoning board. Then we told him, well, he had to go and 
propose a zoning amendment get it down to our town planner that costs money so we we have basically given instruction to um, mr. Johnson to follow a process and he's done that he's followed the process he's he's submitted a change so that he can proceed with what he has proposed and making it a zoning amendment as he was instructed to do so to me that's like boy we've jerked him around a little bit and we probably should have said you know sorry mister you can't do anything with your property you just have to pay taxes on it and that's it you have a useless piece of property and we won't allow you to do anything with that piece of property so I think that that's a little unfair um, and then to go to the um, activities allowed in for the special use permit and and I do think of, of the kids the young adults the children and, the, and the, the young adults that would use a type of recreational area like this and from my experience um, many years ago uh, riding uh, dirt bikes and everything there is something to be said for it being supervised it being a uh, medical services being immediately available um, and I know I've mentioned it before I have experience in my life where uh, accidents do happen out in the High Line uh, people do get killed they get injured and um, it's very traumatic so when I see something like this I'm like wow that would be great for the for the young adults uh, they have a, an area to go to, a uh, recreational area, and they, it's safe, it's a safe environment, and it's monitored, and um, it could save um, a young adult's life because they have, um, I always remember what my husband said uh, when he was growing up. He found an activity that basically saved his life. He was into surfing. And that's what he loved to do. His total focus was on surfing. He didn't drink. He didn't do drugs. But his friends in the neighborhood that exactly. he grew up with Go ahead. ended up either in jail, on drugs, or dead from drug overdoses. So in an effect, there was an activity that saved his life. And I look at, it, at this as an activity for young adults when you're in school, you have soccer, you have basketball, you have football. But once you are out of school, it really is would be nice to have um, an area that young adults could could go to and and be supervised and um, have medical uh, uh, safety issues uh, and concerns taken care of um, and possibly save their life so thank you very much those are my comments on this thank you Joan anyone else um, at this point I was going to entertain a motion unless someone else has something to say do you want Councilor Perry you're the only one who hasn't spoken yet this is a no-win situation no matter which way you go it hurts mr. Johnson or the residents in that area who, who purchased land in an R80 zone so it's a no-win situation I'm, I'm looking at what the zoning zoning is, what the planning board recommends, and what the solicitor recommends. That's what I'm looking at from this point of view, unless somebody can come up with an idea where we continue it, look into some other ways, then, you know, it's a no-brainer. At this point, I'd like to entertain a motion. If someone Actually, I, w I would just like to say one thing for the record on behalf of the council. Um, it, with regard to um, something that Councillor Shabbat said about how Mr. Johnson has been treated from the outset of this process, Mr. Johnson and his legal counsel had two choices. They could have gone directly to the zoning board for the use for a use variance, or the other option was to go this route, which was to 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 submit 
a zoning amendment to the council knowing that it would go back to the planning board with a recommendation and ultimately back to the council so th this process that we're going through right now has been mr johnson and his council's choice and if i'm not mistaken we've granted at least three i believe extensions um at mr johnson and his council's request in an effort to make this as fair as possible and to give him all due consideration so i do slightly take exception to the fact that we haven't um given mr johnson every opportunity to pursue this in a fair way just one rebuttal he did submit it april of 2017 and it sat and sat of 2017 it was mia all his paperwork was mia oh yeah well, that, was, that, that right found. you have that that was the planning it was it was it was the, it was, the, the prior planner right but, but, but when this came to our attention we have tried to give it um the attention we felt it deserved at this point i'd like to entertain a motion but i would like to make a motion i would like to make a motion that we approve mr johnson's uh, get it down to zoning and let them make their decision so what you're approving is the proposed ordinance, ordinance yeah. amendment? Yes, to get it to zoning and let them make their decision, because that's where it goes from here. I second. Uh, Did, didn't zoning already have? Yeah, it's a little, explain so what, this, <coughs> what, what this ordinance means. <laughs> if, if you were to um, oh, yes. approve this ordinance, it would allow the use uh, outlined in the ordinance uh, throughout the R80 zone as, by special use permit. So that way, if any particular applicant, including Mr. Johnson, wanted to take advantage of the use, he would then have to submit an application to the zoning board who could uh, review it and decide uh, what right, they but, in it. but this is throughout town and not only Mr. Johnson's property. Right. right. But throughout the zone. Throughout the 100-acre zone, that's what I'm approving. So that's what that's my... my it's not a hundred. It's not well, hundred. throughout the R80. It has yeah, to be throughout the R80. It's the town. But it needs to it needs to go back to zoning for license for whatever the licensing special or wind, use permit. right for the special yep. use permit, which where we can kind of uh, regulate a little bit. So that's that's my. A little bit. All right. So I have a motion and I have a second. Right, Joan. Okay. Yep. Any, discussion. Any further discussion? Um, just one point. Uh, can we amend? or make suggestions to amend this um, this zoning amendment now so you can do it now the issue is that any proposed change to the language needs to be discussed at, at a public hearing so you'd have to give people a chance to speak on it again Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I have a motion and a second any further discussion all those in favor I'll vote for it three again I'm abstaining. All right, so the motion that's a, fails. That's a push. All right, so um, I'd like to entertain another motion. It fails. Oh, so this all fails. So it fails. So um, the audience has failed. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to take about a 10-minute uh, recess. Thank you for your time.